back everybody. Today we're going over two new lights here from Inforce. So a lot of folks have always really liked uh, the Inforce WML and WMLX uh, profile in terms of user interface and it's got a lot of other things going for it. It's very lightweight. We'll put the weights of both uh, up here on the bottom of the screen for you guys so you guys can check that out. But uh, they got some new ones. They made some improvements to it. They definitely listened to a lot of the user feedback out there that they got. And uh, these are the new Gen 2 lights. So what we're going to do next is step outside, take a look at the beam pattern of these two lights compared to a couple other lights, and uh, just see sort of how they stack up, what kind of illumination you get. And after that, we're going to come back in and uh, look at the actual details of them, the changes that they made. And at the end, we'll wrap it up and let you know what we think. First light up here is the 400 lumen output uh, new WML. The dog went off scene, but you can see that door there is a good bit away and is still uh, being lit up just fine, but it has a pretty good spill as well. Uh, so we'll compare that to the original WML that we have here. And uh, without question, the original WML here has a much narrower focus and has a little bit better throw. I actually did this out uh, to a distance of about 200 yards off camera. I can't really get a good shot of it on the camera, but it has a little bit better throw, but the spill is way better here on the uh, new WMLX, WML, I should say, the new WML for an lumen. So still has a pretty good hotspot. It would be quite blinding to be in your face, but the spill is much better. So in terms of like home defense interior type searching or awareness, you're going to have a little bit better than with the older one here, which is a more focused beam. Again, what you're looking at here is the 400 lumen WML, and we're going to bring in the big boy. That's the 800 lumen there. So I don't know how hard it is or how easy it is to tell on camera, but there is a noticeable light difference. Although it's important to point out, it's not double the light. So a lot of people think that with the increased lumens, you're not going to get double the light. It's sort of a sliding scale. Um, again, this is the 400 lumen that you're looking at. And then here is the 800 lumen. Uh, trying to sort of compare them on like surfaces on the fence here. You can see the 800 is a little bit brighter for sure. And uh, has a similar beam pattern. So nice bright spill uh, all the way around. Again, good for searching, home defense tests, stuff like that. But the 400 is pretty bright as well, but the 800 is definitely just a, a step up. Everything I say here about the WMLs is going to apply to the WMLXs, uh, but we're just going to use this because this is the most popular one for sure. It's the WML, uh, the original sort of uh, single cell one. And uh, there's a number of changes that we're just going to go through. We'll start here at the back, and you can see now that the uh, bale, which is this little locking piece here on the back, now has a detent in it. So in order to uh, either put it in the position it is now where it's ready to use or up in the locked position here, it has a detent to do so. So you can kind of hopefully... Here it's snapping in place, and the reason that was uh, came about, I should say, is that the old one sometimes, if you had your rifle slung or you know in a bag, it would start creeping up, and it could go incrementally up, just like that. And then when you went to use it in your uh, you know moment of need, you'd get blocked by it, which is what it's designed to do. It's designed for those that don't know to prevent uh, negligent discharges of the light um, in low light situations. Uh, obviously, that could be a problem for many reasons. So that's definitely an improvement. Uh, you essentially have to try to put it up. Or to put it down. It's not going to kind of creep up there on its own. Of course the next change here is going to be the actual activation switch itself. So on the old ones it was smooth, on the new ones it has this nice texturing to it and uh, you can see still very very silent in activation. I know that was one thing that a lot of people really liked about the originals. It didn't have the actual audible click to it um, which is good for certainly tactical situations. You don't want to give your position away audibly as well as by light if you don't have to. On the old lights, the big concern was the cracking that would come about occasionally, and usually when it happened, it happened right up here at the head. So uh, you get a crack in this area right here, and uh, sometimes it would render the light actually inoperable due to the way that the battery makes contact, which we'll get into a little bit more coming up next. Um, on the new bodies, these are made of a glass-filled nylon polymer, so it's very similar to like a Glock frame, for instance, for those of you who are familiar with that, very durable stuff. You can scratch it, gouge it, and it won't affect the performance of the light. You're not going to get like a hairline fracture or something like that that you could get in, say, aluminum, and you're also not going to get like a dent in it, which you could get in something like aluminum. So that's certainly a nice feature. 
moving up to the actual uh, function button here, or function switch, whatever they call it, uh, this one again now has a detent. So you have to pretty much purposely move it back in place. It's not gonna sort of accidentally go up. And here on the old one, again, just like uh, the rear here on the bale, it could creep up and then you're sort of in no man's land here in the middle and you don't know which mode you're in. So um, the way the light works though, for those that don't know, is that if it's a forward position, you can press and hold and get a constant on and let go and it will uh, go off. And if you want just a constant on, you can quick press it and it will stay on while this is in the forward position. Also, if you want to use the strobe mode, you can press it twice and it will go into strobe mode. You can turn strobe off if you want to, it's programmable. Um, you just twist out the head, hold it down, and twist, hold the button down in the rear, twist it back down, and it will shut it off. You can also do the inverse and turn it on if it's already turned off. With the switch in the rear, it's momentary only. So only when you're pressing it does the light actually go out. So sort of the best of both worlds there. Um, advocates of uh, having a momentary on light will tell you that you know you only want it on when you want it on, and uh, you don't want to give away your position when you're moving or something like that in low light conditions and folks that say you want the ability to have a constant on make the point that uh, let's say for instance somebody breaks into your house and you actually do have to engage that threat they're on the ground bleeding but not dead yet well of course you still want to be able to watch their hands and anything else they may be doing and uh, if you're on the phone calling 911 if you're doing whatever signaling grab holding your kid who's grabbing your leg or something like that having one hand not having to use the light and actually press and hold it can be an advantage in that situation. So those are really the two schools of argument of constant and, movement and uh, momentary on in this light, having the capability to do both certainly is nice. On the old WMLs, one thing that folks complained about was that the actual cross slot here was not 1913 style in terms of true to spec. It was actually slightly under spec. The reason they did that was because uh, a lot of aftermarket manufacturers that are supposed to be making Picatinny rails or 1913 style rails don't actually make them to spec, so they were doing it to fit with all of them. Now, what that would result in if you actually had a true proper Picatinny rail was a little bit of a sort of play in the light. I've never had one come off. Uh, in fact, I've not read reports of them coming off when screwed down correctly, but folks just didn't like that little bit of play. So now it is a true 1913 uh, spec rail and uh, just line it up there, spin this out all the way. And then I can actually do it here on camera, clamp it down like that, and then tighten it down to mount it. Now, from what I understand, uh, one of the springs that's in here, which actually gives you sort of the clamping, in addition, obviously, to the screw, has been tightened, as, has been strengthened as well, I should say, over the original. I, I don't notice a difference, but um, according to the specs that are out there, it has been tightened or strengthened. While I have this rifle out, I should probably point out, this is one of the mounts that we've been using throughout the review. This is the Arson Machine mount. It's an M-Lock mount, which is really nice and really ergonomic. And one thing folks really like about the WMLs is, of course, the handling characteristics and the ergonomics of them. Um, if you're using a, a vertical foregrip like this, being able to just come up naturally where your thumb would be, or a lot of people like to mount them right on top of the rail. Again, right where your thumb would be, it really is just an ergonomic masterpiece if you will. On the right here we have the new WML and of course the Gem 1 here and you can see the reflector shape is very different. One thing you'll notice is that the new reflector has sort of that orange peel in there and the actual angle of it's different as well which is what's going to give you that uh, nice wide beam that you guys saw out there versus the original which is designed for a little bit more throw and a little bit more hot spot. So uh, pros and cons to each you know if you want throw um, then you know the original may be the better option, but if you want searching capability, situational awareness indoors and for home defense situation or something like that, uh, the wider, more flood pattern certainly is a good thing. So you can see they definitely redesigned that. And additionally, on the new one, they put an aluminum bezel up front. So this is actually aluminum. There's another aluminum part that we're going to show you here in a second, which is also pretty important. I suppose we'll get into that aluminum portion right now, and uh, I'll show you where it is. If you actually take the head off here, and I should point out there, these are actually cooling fins right here. And one thing that Enforce had that a lot of, or I should say no other light manufacturers out there had, was a high output LED that was able to actually run cool and not melt itself. So a lot of the polymers out there that other companies were using would fail due to that. Enforces never did, which was certainly good. And the, the heat sink there up front is also nice. But like I mentioned earlier, this peer, point back here would crack on occasion. You need to see reports of that. And uh, to address that, what they did is, I'm not sure how well the camera picks it up. You can see in there the threads that go around the inside of this sort of beefed up portion right here are aluminum. So. Obviously, that's going to give you a much stronger design in terms of 
cracking resistance or break resistance or anything like that. So that's definitely something that should address the problem. We've had these lights in for, I think, three months now, two months now, and obviously have used them on shotguns, ARs, I think actually just shotguns and ARs at this point, but I've not had a single issue with them uh, at all in terms of you know any negative wear characteristics or anything like that. I think we covered most of it there. Uh, like I said in the beginning, these lights are just super ergonomic and that's really the thing that draws a lot of people to them. Of course, they look really cool as well, which is nice. And they do have the uh, IR capable versions as well that a lot of people who do a lot of low light shooting and stuff like as well. So are they improved to the point that you can trust them again? At this point, I'm not sure. Uh, I want to say yes, um, because everything we've seen so far indicates that. Um, like I said, we've had them in for a few months now. No issues at all, including running 12 gauge buckshot through my short barrel shotgun through them. And uh, again, zero issues, zero flickering, nothing like that at all to report. So everything so far is positive. I've seen a few reports out there on the internet, folks in forums saying the same thing. So it looks like Enforce has made the right changes. Of course, uh, time will tell. We'll course keep running them here on the channel you guys are going to see them for years to come here and uh, keep putting them in use but so far so good uh, one thing I know folks always want to know about is going to be pricing so they're not the cheapest lights out on the market but they're definitely not the most expensive either I think the uh, 400 lumen version that we have here generally speaking if you look around is going to come in somewhere between like 130 135 ish to like 150 155 ish and the WMLX the two cell version is going to come in you know bump that up 20 bucks so 145 to 170 ish um, of course this video is being filmed in 2016 those may change as the years go on but that's pretty much it guys just definitely wanted to give you an update on the Enforce lights I've been a fan of Enforce lights but certainly they've had their shortcomings I actually had a crack in my original FDE one that I sent in and of course they replaced it no, no questions asked which nobody out there at least that I know of says Enforce has bad customer service they've never said that so they've all taken care of it and tried to make it right but these new ones I got a feeling they're going to be uh making it right, so to speak, a little bit less. If you guys have any questions, you can always post down below in the comments section. You can also post over at my Facebook page as always. But thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing, and we'll see you in the next video.